Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back. Now, before we speak to my next guest, Ryan, let's learn how to cook a traditional pilau rice with medulla baljaka. So for the pilau rice, you're using, is it basmati, basmati rice? Basmati rice. And you've been soaking it. Why, why do you soak it beforehand? Um, washing and soaking, first of all, that removes a lot of the milling starch from the rice. It's the starch that makes uh, rice sticky. So you removed a lot of it by washing. Then soaking also removes a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And also it makes the grains softer, rice cooks quicker, wow. and the grains also become fluffy okay. if you soak. Now we've soaked it, so I'm now going to drain the rice. Now, you really do need a nice heavy pan okay. to cook rice, okay? It's really heavy, this one. And for this one, Chrissy, I am going to use ghee. Ghee, okay. <laughs> we had to be naughty somewhere. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. but it does give the most Amazing. wonderful flavor, yes. So how much are we using here? So just about this much. Okay. Hmm? That's not much. That's not much. Yes. You know, this is for four people. <laughs> <laughs> so when the ghee has melted, I'm going to add cinnamon stick, mm -hmm. star anise, cardamom pods, and cloves and the bay leaves. One cinnamon stick, two star anise. And cardamom pods, again, you have to give that special treatment of opening up the pod like that. Drain it, no, no goes in there. So I have my turmeric in my cupboard here. This is my spice cupboard. <laughs> Very little, I just want tiny bit. So I'm just going to put in 16 fluid ounces of warm water to that. Okay. Put your water in. This is again warm water from the tap. So now see, it's boiling. I'm going to turn the heat right down, as low as it will go. Lid on, make sure there's, it's a very tightly fitted lid. And here is my timer. I'm going to time it for eight minutes. Eight minutes, exactly. So when the timer goes, just leave the rice alone, like I said earlier. Now lift the lid, wow. see just a little tiny bit of turmeric has given that it's beautiful color, color. Yeah. and before you do anything fluff it up with a fork. See what I mean by fluffy mm. grains which is also separate and That's nice lovely. and dry. So until we are ready to eat I'm just going to leave it covered. Yummy, thank you very much, Majula, for making us extra hungry. But before I introduce Ryan, let's take a look at this quick clip. Oh. 
that wasn't enough. I wanted to hear a bit more. You're going to have to sing live now. <laughs> How are you, Ryan? I'm good. Thank you very much, Chrissy. Thank you so much for coming on the show today because you've got something very, very important to speak to us about. Can you tell us about why you, you, know, you are so interested in pancreatic cancer? Um, well, I lost my mum to pancreatic cancer in 2012. Mm -hmm. And it was obviously a massive shock to the system. She went in for an operation. And the day she was due to come home, she started obviously with pain and they sent her down for an urgent CTT scan mm -hmm. <laughs> and they found that she had pancreatic cancer and three months later she died at home. Three months, wow, yeah. gosh. It's just, pancreatic cancer has just got a, obviously a very poor survival rate mm -hmm. and within the last 40 years there's, there's no money invested into pancreatic cancer, like there is all different types of cancers from you know, obviously you see breast cancer, you see testicle, you see mm -hmm. prostate bowel, but you never hear anything about pancreatic it's, cancer. Yeah, it's not talked about know? as much, is it? And yeah. obviously with November being Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, I don't mm -hmm. understand why they can't do an advert yeah. to, you know, for awareness of that, yeah. but never have. Okay. And obviously it was a terrible time for you and the family, but how you've also done something very positive on the back of all of that, haven't you? I have indeed, yes. Yeah. What have you done? Um, since um, the loss of my mum, um, I needed to, well, my mum's last words to me was, um, son, do me one thing and go back into what you're best at. And I said, what do you, well, I knew what she was going to say. And she said, you're a born star and remember you'll always be my blue-eyed star. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I started then auditioning for various roles and I was getting knockbacks and I was thinking to myself, am I getting too old, am I doing this, that and the other? And, mm -hmm. um, auditioned. She really believed in you, right? Yeah, yeah. she really, really did mm -hmm. believe in me. All from, from being like six year old, you know, that's when I want, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I got taken on by a company, um, started writing with a, a really good friend of mine in America. Mm. And now I'm doing a whole album for pancreatic cancer and oh, it's amazing. Something. And um, I've had a great response from, you know, like the public. Yeah. and radios and um, the Yorkshire Evening Post because obviously I'm from Leeds mm -hmm. um, and with the radios and ITV calendar they've been absolutely amazing with mm -hmm. you know getting behind me and you know supporting me what I'm doing for pancreatic mm -hmm. cancer. So it's like you've taken on that responsibility haven't you to sort of get the awareness out there and you know to get more into the research and everything. Definitely. Did you feel that kind of not I would say burden but that responsibility on your shoulders would you say? Yeah definitely I, I just I just really want to make a big change do you know it's when obviously my mum was diagnosed, um, I researched on the internet about pancreatic cancer and there was nothing out there, no charity or anything that was doing anything for, to give, you know, to give a people people chance in life. Mm. Do you know, it was so poorly funded until I obviously I met a lady, well, not obviously I spoke to a lady who opened up her own charity in 2004, called Maggie and spoke to her and went through things and I just said, I want to do something. I don't know what, and then I thought, my mum, I'm going to go into, back into singing, I'm going to go into show business. So you combine something that you, you love to do with a really worthy cause as well, which is, yeah. which is fantastic. What's been the most rewarding thing for you, would you say, Ryan? I think the most rewarding thing for me is knowing that, you know, what I'm doing is going to go on to help raise awareness and help mm. save people's lives. Yeah. My mum was always a people person, she'd give you the last pound in her pocket and you know i'm so glad and proud you know to call her my mum yeah. and to have to be blessed with a lady in my life like that because i couldn't mm -hmm. wish for anyone better and mm -hmm. she created the man i am today brilliant okay and what about your your future plans with your singing and everything what, what are you hoping to to achieve well um i'm going to do the album obviously continue mm -hmm. this that next single of us which is always <coughs> key to the heart and I'm writing um, other material, obviously, with my friend Quentin in America, mm -hmm. um, and the album's going to be very different. It's going to be very, it's not just all about sad sort of songs. I'm going to do a big dance anthem. Oh, I'm going nice. to do something completely different yeah. for me, and obviously the album will be released um, for Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month yeah. in November, okay. um, and then after that, I will continue using my talent, because I don't just do singing, I do all sorts of things. Yeah. From presenting, singing, do everything. <laughs> you and him, I'll turn me on to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's lovely. Now, Ryan, um, I wanted to ask you this question, because I also lost my father a few months ago to, to cancer. And for some people that have been through the same 
a similar thing. It's like they can't, they can't imagine sort of being happy again and being able to be positive again because they've lost someone that's very, very close to them. What advice would you give someone that has been through something or is going through something like that at the moment? I would say to them, do you know, it's, I didn't know my own strength and I really, really didn't. And I used to listen to the song by Whitney Houston, I didn't know my own strength and I looked to you. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I have a title down this side of my arm saying I didn't know my own strength through my darkest hour. And yeah. to everyone out there, you know, who's going through any type of cancer, pancreatic or anything, or losing up, lost a loved one or the grieving or anything, mm -hmm. you know, just you believe in yourself and, you know, you can, you can use your inner strength that you don't even know you've got. Yeah. And, you know, go forward. And I never, ever thought, literally, my mum wasn't just my mum, she was my best friend in my whole world. Mm -hmm. And for me to be sat here today talking to you it, in my world, it's a miracle. Brilliant. It Thank really you is. so much. You know what, I have to admit, before I was a thought, am I going to be able to keep it together to do this interview? Because mm. <laughs> that's you know, it's something close to my heart. But it's true what you're saying. When you, when you put your, your energy and your strength into doing something good and you know, to help other people, it, it does you know, spur you on. And you, you, I think you recover quickly. Obviously, you're never going to forget your loved ones. And it does hurt. You do miss them. But you know, there is life after, afterwards. Yeah. And you can be happy. And you, you know, just put some energy into helping other people as well. Without a doubt, it's really, it's the truth. Do you yeah. know, it's, I'm a true believer in, you know, it's me, like me talking to you now, it's and like me moving my hands, it's a shell, but yeah. I'm talking to you from my soul and it's the yeah. soul that goes on and lives on. Mm -hmm. So Definitely. no matter, you know, if your loved one has passed away, they're always going to be with you, they're not, yeah. they're only in the next room. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Ryan, for talking to us. All the okay. best with all the music Thank and everything you that you're Chrissy. doing. Brilliant. Okay, so do stay tuned because up next we have British Belgian girl group Delta Moore who will be performing for us and I'll also be answering a question from one of you guys at home. So do join us after this. Don't forget to subscribe to the Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter.